Hey Mel. 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 Sometimes. How do I drive? How do I drive? Can you hear me? Hear me? Hear me? Hear me? Hear me? Hear me? You ready? Okay. Yes. We'll go ahead and start. Um, I'd like to welcome you to the St. Louis County Planning Commission public hearing. This meeting is for the purpose of hearing presentations on petitions for rezoning or requests for special procedure permits. I'm Wayne Hilsinger, chairman of the commission. In addition to the other members of the Planning Commission, I would like to introduce on my right, Jacob Trimble, Director of Planning, and the planners assigned to tonight's petitions are on my left. I hope you've picked up a copy of the public hearing guidelines brochure and tonight's public hearing notice, which are on the table just outside the door. The brochure describes the format we will use for the meeting and the agenda lists the order in which we will hear the petitions. If you wish to speak, please fill out a speaker attendance card indicating the petition you were here for. If you speak, please give your card to me as you approach the podium. If you do not choose to speak, please put your card on the table at the exit to the chambers. The card includes a QR code that you can scan to subscribe to Planning Commission agendas. By doing this, you will be able to access a copy of the Commission's report when it goes to the County Council. The Commission will not make a decision on petitions heard this evening. Normally, the Commission will receive staff reports 
to make a decision on tonight's petitions at the next executive meeting on November 6, 2023. Additional comments, letters, and petitions submitted to the Department of Planning within one week of this meeting will be distributed to the planning commissioners in their executive meeting agenda packet. Written comment can be sent via email to planning at St. If additional information is required, the decision may be delayed. The planning commission's recommendations will then be forwarded to the county council who has the responsibility for the final decision. The meeting will observe the following guidelines. Planning staff will introduce the petition and shows photos of the site. Then the petitioner will present the request. They will be allotted 15 minutes. Then persons in favor of the request will speak. After that, persons in opposition are with concern. Persons speaking as an individual will, will be allowed two minutes. Persons representing groups will be allowed five minutes. Please keep your remarks brief and avoid repetitive or seconding presentations. After all opposition speakers have spoken, the petitioner will be allowed five minutes to answer questions and points raised by other speakers. The commission may ask question of any speaker. After each petition is heard tonight, we will ask for a show of hands for persons in favor and those in opposition or with concern. This is not a vote and is not binding on the commission or the county council. The purpose is to make the crowd count part of the record for each petition. And with that, we'll hear the first petition, which is PC 28-23. Good evening, commissioners. Before us is PC 28-23, Chris and Angela Courtright requesting for a rezoning from C8 to amended C8 on a, 0 point, on a 0 0.53 acres located at southwest quadrant of Gravoy Road and Consul Avenue. Um, so as you can see, this is the context um, map for the county, and the subject site is located at the south, um, south county, and is outlined in red. And this is a land use map, and I would like to draw our attention to some key important information on this map. Um, the first is the subject site, which is formerly the St. Louis County, um, St. Louis Police Station building. And um, along Gravoy Road, we have a lot of commercial activities. And um, there's a school and also a church along, in, along this area. And at the same time, too, we have multiple family residents and single family residents. And this is just a larger area map that um, kind of like show the three dimension, um, three dimensional view of what I explained earlier about the land use map. And before us tonight is um, a request for a rezoning from C8 to amended C8. And the C8 plan commercial district is um, establishment of combination of developments and uses for which no provision is made in any other single commercial district or the establishment of developments and uses in location appropriate under approved site plans and conditions. And currently, the only permitted use in this particular area is sales of plumbing materials. And um, the petitioners are requesting for the, um, the permission to sell equipment and appliance and also the repair and warehousing. So, so to the south is the public hearing, not public hearing notice, west from Council Avenue. Um, showing the entrance to the subject site. Then this is not along Consul Avenue towards Gravoy Road. This is south along Consul Avenue showing the residences. And this is west to the subject site, not across Gravoy Road, east along Gravoy Road. 
and west along Gravoy Road. Then this is southwest of the subject site. Then this is west showing the existing building on the subject site. And this is the west side of the building. Then this is the south from the northwest corner of the site. West from the southwestern corner of the site. And this is south of the um, building showing the property line. So I'll call on the petitioners for their presentation. Okay, thank you. Petitioner? Go so, state your name for the uh, record. my name is Chris Courtright. Angela Courtright. So, basically, what we're doing across the street, we we also own more for less remodeling kitchen and bath design center across the street from the old police station. So, basically, what we're wanting to do here is sell appliances and open up appliances for less because we already sell kitchen kitchen cabinets and everything out of the other facility to kind of make this a one-stop shop. So that's what we were uh, opposing to do here. And then, you know, amend the zoning because we thought it was C8 when we purchased the property. So. Should we go over the. Um, yeah. Tell us what you're going to do with the building. We're going to keep it like it is but we're going to finish about 1600 square feet for the showroom portion and then anything left in the building will be to store the appliances okay and also what we were going to do too is put in the 20-foot buffer and block the entrance from the residential neighborhood so no one can exit from there any any further so and then widen the entrance from the street which we already had MoDOT approval. Okay, questions, anyone? Also the privacy point. Mr. Hilsinger, may I yeah, ask a few questions? Could you describe a little bit for the landscape changes that you would be proposing at the site? Yes, so we are putting in the 20 foot foot buffer along council and along Gravoy where we can and then we were proposing on the back side of the property of putting a privacy, a six foot white privacy fence instead of the buffer because we would like to put parking there so we can leave the, the garage door open for <coughs> deliveries. And would there be any new light standards in the, in the parking uh, lot? Yeah, so the same thing like we did across the street is we put in the wall packs on the building, which illuminates more than what we need. And then also there is some existing poles that we were going to go ahead and put some new lighting in the parking lot as well. Go ahead. Hours of business. Your hours of business, what would they be? Your hours of business? Nine to five. Nine to five. Like across the street, Monday through Friday. Monday through Friday. Any outside storage? Well, and also that's because our business. So also we'd be open on Saturday as well from 9 to 5. 9 to 5, yeah. Any outside storage? No. Okay. Anyone else have any questions? I guess I have a question for okay. Jacob. So what is it zoned now? So the zoning for the site is currently C8 planned commercial district. So the request is essentially to amend the C8 district for their use. So this would be an amended development in the C8 planned commercial district. Go ahead. How many employees do you plan on having here? I'm, I'm talking about parking. That's what I'm it, Three employees. And then a uh, delivery truck. I. I I believe you'd have a mm -hmm. box truck yep. here. Would you be storing that box truck here on this site? Uh, I would like to if I could. 
Angela, could you go one more slide? I think your other site plan exhibits there. Thank you. So I believe what we're seeing here are the, is the truck radius movement on the site. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. Anyone else have any questions? Seeing none, we thank you. Appreciate it. Before you step down, may I please have your speaker's cards? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. At this time, is there anyone representing a group or an individual who'd like to speak in favor? Seeing none, is there anyone representing a group or an individual who'd like to speak in opposition or with concern? Seeing no one, we do not need rebuttal. And at this time, we'll take a show of hands for those in favor of this petition. Let the record show four. Those opposed are with concerns. Let the record show none. And that concludes this hearing. We thank you. And then we'll move to the last item tonight, which is PC 27-23, Real Estate Partners. Good evening, commissioners. Before you have PC 27-23, Real Estate Partners 10 LLC. The request is for a change in zoning from C8 Planned Commercial District to amended C8 Planned Commercial District on a 9.47 acre tract on the northwest quadrant of South Lindbergh Boulevard and East Concord Road. You can see in the context map that the location, the site is located in South County and on the right you can see the site outlined in red. On this location map you can see a wide variety of commercial uses uh, along South Lindbergh Boulevard with a uh, especially intense concentration of auto dealerships. Uh, beyond that commercial frontage, we see uh, predominantly single family homes. Here is the site outlined in red. Uh, to catch you up on the request, uh, the C8 Plan Commercial District uh, allows for the establishment of a combination of developments and uses for which no provision is made in any other single C commercial district or the establishment of development and uses in locations appropriate under approved site plans and conditions. At this site, which is currently zoned C8 plan commercial district, a home improvement center and accessory sales and storage areas and all uses permitted without a conditional use permit in the C3 shopping district except advertising signs. The proposed use is all C3 shopping district permitted uses, including a self storage facility. The department would like to note that self storage is not permitted in the C3 shopping district by right or via conditional use permit procedure. So this uh, image is facing west towards the public hearing notice. You can see the uh, former uh, furniture store in the background. This is facing east across South Lindbergh. This is southeast down Lindbergh. This is facing north uh, in the opposite direction on Lindbergh and you can see some of those um, auto dealerships. Um, also, I'd like to note that uh, across Lindbergh is the municipality of Green Park. This is uh, facing north at a cross access easement um, into the neighboring auto dealership. This is facing east along uh, the property line up to the north. And this is west along that same property line. This is facing south into the site, uh, showing the parking that was previously provided by the former use. This is facing west, and you can see the existing structure of the building. This is facing west along the northern side of that building. This is facing south along the facade. This is facing west on the southern side of that existing structure. 
This is facing south um, at single family residences adjacent to the site. This is facing east along the southern property line. This is facing south on the uh, southeast corner where the developer has proposed a curb cut and drive entrance from East Concord. This is facing north towards uh, adjacent single family residences. This is facing west. This is facing south behind the existing building. This is facing south uh, towards a uh, former uh, <coughs> loading dock facing east for the better image of that loading dock and then facing east once more. Okay, petitioner. Um, good evening, Chairman, members of the Commission. For the record, my name is George Stock. I'm with Stock and Associates Consulting Engineers, and my address is 257 Chesterfield Business Parkway. I'm here this evening on behalf of Real Estate um, Partners X LLC. Uh, joining me this evening uh, is Mr. Andy Patel. He is the owner of Real Estate Partners X LLC and this particular property. Um, as was previously stated, we're here requesting your consideration to amend an existing C8 ordinance that was approved and adopted by St. Louis County in approximately 1991. Uh, it was specifically for a use of home quarters who was no longer in the marketplace, um, a home improvement development, um, along with a surface parking lot. Uh, our request, as mentioned, is to amend that to allow a redevelopment, reposition of this particular property into somewhat of a mixed development, uh, adding some considerable character to the building uh, to the parking and enhanced landscaping and multiple uses on the site. Um, our goal tonight is to present this project, answer any questions the commission may have, listen to the public, and then respond accordingly. Um, the first step in this is to reposition the building. It's a 91,784 square foot building. As I mentioned, was built for home quarters, uh, was repurposed as um, weekends only. Uh, there is no retailer in the marketplace for such a building. And so our proposal is to redevelop that building, um, reposition it to provide for 28,700 square feet, which would be a dogwood social, uh, 39,300 square feet, which would be two levels, which would be luxury vehicle storage as well as uh, self-storage, and then 22,575 square feet of retail. Um, there would be 394 parking spaces, and then there would be two commercial lots along Lindbergh Boulevard. So as the site exists today, outlined in red, similar to a previous slide you saw, uh, you see the site, which is a total of 9.47 acres. It fronts uh, Lindbergh Boulevard. It has a car dealership immediately to the north. It has a credit union and a couple uh, restaurants uh, along the east side. Along the south is a church and residential. And then uh, to the west is 100% uh, residential properties. Uh, there was a 100-foot buffer that was created uh, when the home quarter uh, developed. The intent is to retain that 100-foot buffer, uh, enhance and improve it, uh, replace the fences. The same would be along the south property line. There's a very mature buffer, but as you saw in a few of those slides of the existing condition, there's some gaps that we would propose to landscape those. Um, the building, as you saw in the slides, being a home quarter, had an industrial purpose to it. So on the south side was the loading and the receiving for the home improvements, as well as it had outdoor storage of lumber along the south side of the building. So both the west and the south, those areas would be repositioned under our plan. Um, this is a survey uh, of the property just superimposed on the aerial. It has some topography. Um, generally, the site's flat, as you saw looking from Lindbergh. It's a flat parking lot. There is some topographical relief sloping up to the residential properties along the uh, west side, as well as there is a berm um, in place there. Uh, but this shows you the perimeter. It shows the surface parking lot, as you can see. There's not a lot of landscape islands in that parking lot, I think was evidenced by the photos as well. So just a couple more, I'll go through these slides, but this, this particular slide is a view looking at the face of the building from Lindbergh Boulevard. 
This is that outdoor lumber area, which we would be repositioning that to be outdoor seating and dining with the Dogwood Social. And then this is our site plan. So a little bit about the building. I'll start inside the building. I mentioned at the beginning, we had three distinct uses uh, for the building. Um, at the south end would be the 28,700 square foot Dogwood Social. We'll talk a little bit more about that. Immediately to the south would be outdoor seating. Also, um, we have pickleball courts in that outside storage area, the southwest uh, portion of the building. And then distinctively in green is the landscape buffer, the 100 foot that's along the west side, and then a variable width landscaping along the south side adjacent to East Concord. Um, out in front of the building, I'm sorry, and then in the center of the building, tucked into the building is that area of luxury uh, vehicle storage uh, as well as self storage. A um, little bit different than the normal self storage, which is freestanding, um, accessible from the front or street view. In this case, you'll notice a very discreet front door when we get to the elevations that gives you to the office and that's where you do the leasing. But any uh, services um, of uh, vehicles entering or exiting or storage all happens in the rear of the building, generally where those loading docks are today um, that formerly served the weekends only in the home quarters. And then the northeast portion of the building would be multi-tenant retail. There could be four to seven, and you'll see that in the slide of the storefronts for retail. Um, if the parking lot would be brought up to compliance with St. Louis County codes, whereby we are integrating landscaping. You see the green islands that don't exist today. And then as you move towards Lindbergh, um, we're proposing two um, additional retail type uses, one being a bank or credit union, and then the second being a small shop um, accommodate two restaurants. Uh, part of the um, uh, desire or the request here is to improve access. When the home quarter went in, it, it had a single point of ingress and egress. The ordinance simply said that uh, additional access to East Concord we subject to a public hearing, thus our re request tonight. So we are requesting uh, a, an access point onto East Concord aligned with the at the T intersection. We are conducting a traffic study. Um, Crawford Bunny Braemeyer has been engaged and has a scoping meeting set up with St. Louis County and MoDOT uh, for this Wednesday. So as we go through this process, we'll be going through a traffic study to be able to identify the traffic generated from this use, understanding the existing traffic on East Concord. Uh, but the belief is in order to have safe ingress and egress, uh, some portions of the, this traffic should have the utilization of the signalized intersection at Lindbergh and East Concord. Uh, we are not going to get another signalized intersection from BoDOT. So we do think it's an important and we want to take the necessary steps to be able to address any concerns there might be um, by engaging the two governing authorities, St. Louis County and MoDOT to study the intersection and our traffic study. And the next slide is really just a requirement of uh, the rezoning at some site sections, but we're not changing the topography of the grades through the site. Um, again, the building stays in place, reuse, reutilization of the building, um, changes to the parking, right, repaving, removing asphalt paving, putting in green, and around the perimeters where the landscape buffers are, supplementing those with no landscaping, but no substantial changes. Uh, this is the landscape plan, which is part of the package. It has a very detailed uh, legend, but again, much of it is preservation and or um, pruning and trimming and removal of invasive species and replacement with um, species that are sustainable and consistent with uh, what's desirable in St. Louis County. So a little bit about Dogwood Social. Uh, Mr. Patel owns four of those, uh, one in Cape Girardeau, one in Ellisville, Missouri, one in O'Fallon, Missouri, one in O'Fallon, Illinois. Uh, the O'Fallon, Missouri and the O'Fallon, Illinois uh, are in former Gold Gyms buildings. So this concept of Dogwood Social repurposing into a building, making the building better, engaging it, um, making it sustainable, um, making it a destination for the community, making it profitable, making money generation tax revenue for St. Louis County, that's what it does. Um, a little bit about it, Dogwood Social House is a mixed use entertainment facility and it's geared toward families and adventure searchers alike. The activities that take place besides dining um, are bowling, interactive mini golf, uh, arcades, axe throwing, cornholes, darts, pool, and much more. The abundant and spacious facility is perfect for birthday parties, family gatherings, holiday and corporate events, sports, teams, outings, parties, fundraisers, and much more. Food and beverage options include an upscale American pub menu, along with hand-tossed pizzas and self-serve draft beer walls. 
Sports viewing is abundant with 50 feet LED TV walls with smaller TVs throughout. I think if the commission or anybody wanted to contact any of these municipalities about Dogwood Social, I think they would get very favorable responses from any of the elected officials um, within those uh, municipalities on Dogwood Social. A little bit about what we're doing to the building. So this is the facade. You saw those pictures before. So you see that uh, vertical elements of the building, all four sides, are getting architectural treatments such that it doesn't look so industrial. Um, it had a purpose to be industrial. It's no longer. It wants to be welcoming. It wants to be friendly. It wants to engage outdoor seating. It wants to uh, bring restaurants into the area. So it becomes a, a combination of um, masonry, um, wood, um, and then glass glazing and aluminum frames in order to give that building some character. What you see in the center, very small, is the entrance to the office of the self-storage. It's not where vehicles pull in. It's not where people bring storage. That all goes around the rear. But if you want to lease space for a, a vehicle or storage, you go through the front door. So it blends very well with the Dogwood Social, which is to the left, and then the 22,000 square feet of retail that's to the right. This would be the southeast corner. Uh, again, this is where that lumber storage was, that heavy industrial would be repositioned with tables, um, garden walls, landscaping, um, and again, separated from the parking lot and would be serviced through the corner of the building, but it would provide an outdoor dining experience. This is the other corner, this is the northwest corner. So as I stated before, there could be multiple tenants, anywhere from four to seven tenants within that 22,000 feet. You see the glazing in the storefronts and the architectural element, not just the change in materials from what's there, but the vertical relief in the roof line to give the building some character. So bird's eye view looking southwest, um, basically over Lindbergh, looking back towards the residential properties or East Concord. So you see that 6,700 square foot uh, retail restaurant building uh, right in the front, and then next to it is the Credit Union Bank and then the multi-tenant, both the retail, the self-storage, and the Dogwood Social. This is just a similar view, but down on Lindbergh at this point, looking across the site. As I mentioned, it's flat. We're not changing the grade topography, but what we are doing is integrating landscaping that doesn't ex exist today. So relative to those materials that are being added, it's corrugated metal, vintage wood panels, ACM panels, um, clear anodized aluminum storefront system, storefront glass, aluminum canopy, cultured stone veneer, wood look panel system, and then some CMU block. Um, with regards to hours of operation, um, the hours of operation of the Dogwood Social currently Monday through Thursday would be from 11 a.m. till midnight. Um, currently we're proposing pickleball to uh, close at 9 p.m. Friday and Saturday would be 11 a.m. to 1 a.m. Pickleball close at 9 p.m. Um, Sunday, 11 a.m. midnight, and pickleball at 9 p.m. Uh, the whole pickleball, I, I, I hear pluses and minus. We do a lot of pickleball facility. There is no question it's the fastest growing sport. Um, some people complain about the noise. So while I petitioned, you know, proposed 9 p.m., we certainly are open to what is the appropriate of 9 p.m. as far as closing pickleball. We do believe there's a need, um, but we also recognize that there's residential properties beyond that 100-foot buffer. It would be fence, it would be landscape, but that's certainly something up to this commission and we're open for discussion on that. Uh, with that said, that concludes our presentation. Happy to answer any questions you may have. Okay. Questions? Sandy? I have some questions. So um, those restaurants in front, that I guess it's 6,700 square feet, what's an example of what those restaurants would be? Um, like what I'm not supposed to use names. So, they're, they're not fast food. There is a drive up on, on a pickup on one, but um, Cordoba would be a good example. Okay. Of, of, um, I, I think there's a Panda Express maybe across the street or something, but right. you know, there, there, there is a very strong interest of the, um, I don't want to call them fast food because they're not. They're more quick service. They're a little higher quality. They're not a high volume, um, and they're, they go across the board. It, it, it could be a Baskin and Robbins. Um, okay. is another good example. Cadoba is an example. Crazy Bulls and Wraps is an example of that type of restaurant. And then on the right side, it shows Dogwood Retail, but that really doesn't have anything to do with the Dogwood facility no. on the left. That's just like a retail store. That could that would be the name of whoever, whatever tenant would go there. It's, just, okay. it's an example of how we could sign that wall 
and again, the signage would be in accordance with St. Louis County requirements, but you know, each one of those tenants above those glazing doors would more than likely have signage identifying the sure. use. And then the outside eating, would that include like music or, you know, what kind of noise level would there be for the outside dining? Well, I, I, again, the St. Louis County has noise ordinances, so we would uh, be very respectful of those. Um, and I don't know what those numbers are. You know, there's a nighttime, there's a daytime, um, and I don't know that there's a weekend, but we would certainly be abiding by those loud music, disturbance of the residential is not something that uh, we have any interest. It, it, we wanna be compatible with the residents. Residence. So would you give me the hours again for the dogwood? So the, it, Monday through Thursday, 11 a.m. till midnight. Mm -hmm. Pickleball closed at 9 p.m. Friday and Saturday, 11 a.m. to 1 a.m. And then Sunday, 11 a.m. till midnight. And pickleball at this time, 9 p.m. on all seven days would close. Okay. And then you mentioned in the back, I know I'm familiar with that property and I know that there's you know, a green space in the back. Is there a fence back there also? It's a couple fences and um, there's a fence at the property line. I think that showed up in one of the slides as a wood fence. Uh, there's a combination of a site proof fence and a chain link fence along portions of ours. Ours would be to, you know, replace the fencing so that it's consistent, you know, with the project and it would be a site proof fence of a, a vinyl material prefabricated uh, fence system. Like a system. six foot privacy fence. Six foot, it would be definitely a privacy fence, yes. Thank you. Paul? I'll let Mr. Patel answer that question. Go ahead and state your name for the record. Oh. <coughs> Andy Patel. And it's pretty much all at 600 to five to 600. All of them. Um, my other little comment is about the pickleball. I noticed um, a couple of the courts look like they back right up to the building. And I'm not sure if there's enough space to use all those tennis uh, courts all around it. Does he need space behind, behind the courts themselves to actually use them? Just a, just a comment for you to look at. That, that's going to be about three pickleball court, and you have a room behind, like eight feet to walk by on each side. So there may not be eight. Understood. But there's only three. Yeah. Anyone else? May I uh, ask yeah. a question, Mr. Hilsinger? Mm -hmm. um, could you describe whether there would be any sort of box trucks parked at this, um, such as like a U-Haul, or would there be any such type of um, those kinds of trucks that you would pr propose at this site? No. no. Go ahead, Keith. Uh, your self storage for the luxury cars. That's got it. Okay, so that's going to be on the ground level where the cars would the be. The car would be on the ground level. And then self storage up on the second level. Second that level. You can go. And what type of protections would the fire department have you talked to about bringing cars in and out of that building? And then the time that your times of business on the self storage for bringing cars in and out. So car will be like 11 to 8, 11 o'clock to 8 o'clock at night. So it could be at 8 in the morning to 6. And the reason why I ask about the, <clears throat> about the cars is, is uh, you, you know, uh, <clears throat> somebody pulls a car in there and for some reason it's you're saying it's a luxury car, but it's an old exotic car. And uh, it's got a carburetor on there and it's malfunctioning and you get a fire. Who's, who's there and what, what do you have that's gonna down that fire? Yeah, I, I think that the key is the building, um, when, it's, when it's designed, the interior design, it'll have to meet the fire code requirements and those requirements of, I believe this is Melville Fire District, Ed Burkle. Yeah. Um, so we, we will work with him very closely as to the ratings of the walls, the suppression system that would go in. But uh, it would certainly be designed to meet not only St. Louis County codes, but the Melville Fire Protection. Yeah, because, you know, I mean, I'm, my concern is you've got businesses there and 
yeah. restaurant, it, and something would happen, boom. The vehicle, this luxury vehicle is becoming more common. We've, we've done a few of those. And in particular, you know, down in the Chesterfield Valley, there's yeah. self you, you're, you're familiar with the exotic cars and mm -hmm. cars and designed <laughs> such to be able to be fire suppression systems in the building ratings in order to accommodate that use, that storage. Okay, thank you. What about the exhaust from them? The ventilation system is also uh, designed such to be able to provide the air changes necessary for exhaust fumes for vehicles. Okay, anyone else? Seeing none, we thank you. Thank you. thank you. Thank you. At this time, is there anyone representing a group or individual who'd like to speak in favor of this petition? Seeing none, is there any individual representing a group or an individual who's opposed or with concerns who'd like to speak? Come on. Hello, my name's Todd Ostrom, and um, I'm the president of the of the uh, Concord Oaks Improvement Association, which with, with, is the Concord Oaks subdivision that's located directly behind um, the property uh, that we're speaking of today. Um, the every project that's approved um, in South County near our area has an effect on our neighborhood by uh, the Costco that, that was built um, to the to the south of us is has created noise in our subdivision. The QT across the street um, uh, has created noise. The uh, cars that come out of there, they don't they don't take it easy going up to 55. They they go as fast as they possibly can and that makes quite a bit of noise. Each motorcycle that does that also and then the six houses that were built um, to the in, in our sub well not our subdivision but next to our subdivision we had trees uh, that were there before the houses and now those are all knocked down and that's created quite a bit of noise in the neighborhood and lighting issues not just for those houses there <clears throat> but the houses uh, our houses in our subdivision um, our, our subdivision consists of 50 houses, approximately 100 people. Um, uh, each, I'm, uh, we're not necessarily opposed to the bar, but um, the pickleball courts in the back would create an enormous amount of, uh, of, of noise. And it doesn't matter when it's a, when they can play there or not, that any time um, anybody's playing pickleball, it's going to create noise in our neighborhood. There's an acoustic um, uh, path or behind through our neighborhood that it just makes everything louder. And I can hear my neighbor cough in his backyard, and any dog barking on the other end of the corridor, um, you can hear that. Um, any pickleball courts would just be a complete disaster for our neighborhood. Um, so, Mr. Hilzinger, that's two minutes. Okay, thank you. Um, and the outdoor patio that that that's they're they're proposing, um, we could probably live with dining only. Um, anything else out there at, at later at night? That's going to we're going to be hearing hearing that also. Um, the existing lighting, I'm, it sounds like they're going to change that. Right now, um, we had trouble with the previous uh, tenant. They, they had their lights were were not in code. Um, they were shining in the back of of one of our uh, subdivision houses, um, and and you know he changed, he fixed them one time. I, I guess he's going to change that. So that that's a good thing if that if that's going to happen. Uh, the fencing back there, that's good, um, but I would suggest that six feet is not enough. Um, and I would suggest a, some sort of a retaining wall that's at least brick um, that would, um, you know, help with the noise issues of this place. If you could start wrapping it up. Yep. Um, 
and the entrance to East Concord, that's a complete disaster. It's already congested, and it, and uh, and I don't know the 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 diagram's pretty vague right now. So I I hope that that that's a little different or something to that effect. Also, um, it, it, more more traffic on East Concord. There are people walking there. The county did a, a terrible job. They they completed half of the sidewalk on, on East Concord and then, and then at parts you'll have to walk out on the street. So so it's so it's dangerous for anybody in our neighborhood walking from our subdivision to the park down the street or walking in general. How long have you lived there? Pardon me? How long have you lived? Oh, over you? 20 years, about 23 years. Okay. So home quarters came before they, you were there? They closed the... I mean, when it went in. They closed the six months after I moved in there. Okay. So it was open. But you weren't there when it went from Don Dar to... No, I was not. Okay. But um, well, the next gentleman that wants to speak, he, he's been there. All right. Thank you. Thank you. May Appreciate I please have your card? Thank you so much. Thank you. So my name is Carl Vogt, and I have been in my house for 50 years. I'm on Chasewood, right down at the end, close to this development. And we talk about the noise of the pickleball courts across the street, across East Concord from the development, and toward Lindbergh, there's a Bible church, and they had a grassy area there. And some years ago, they used to occasionally have people out there playing games, teenagers, young folks, and that was just occasional. And I think about the pickleball courts, people complain about how loud they are. I haven't personally experienced it, but eight pickleball courts and uh, operating six days a week, you know, uh, do I have to wait till nine o'clock before I can go out and sit quietly? So I hope that one, all activities are, other than dining, are confined to the interior of their building and that there be no music or any other speakers going outside uh, just so we can have a little peace and quiet. The other thing, uh, the exit on the East Concord is a terrible situation. I can't imagine that the highways will approve that because it's uh, just adding to a complex uh, intersection already. As you're trying to make a right turn off Lindbergh onto East Concord, uh, the drive from Quick Trip across the street sits low and you can't see the traffic until you edge out and you're looking to the left and here you have now, if we have a drive there, somebody's pulling out on your right as you're trying to see to it that nobody's coming across from your left. So, and they can go straight across the East Conk, I'm sorry, straight across the Vontagi and vice versa. Vontagi traffic could go straight across into the, this, the way that drive is set up. But I was there 30 years ago when uh, they, it was, the property was developed and they wanted to, who accesses to East Concord, and it came down. Mr. To, Hilsinger, that's two minutes. Okay. Came down to just uh, uh, no access. A couple of years later, quick the uh, home quarters was coming back asking for uh, access once again, and uh, the neighborhood opposition started rising up, and they didn't even uh, submit it to the planning commission. And then we had a gentleman came and uh, he wanted to develop a restaurant in there, and it was contingent on him getting access to East Concord, and he heard of the opposition, he talked to the neighborhood, and uh, with that, he dropped it. So uh, if this development is allowed to go, uh, and they don't have access to East Concord, I know that they will be back next year and a year after seeking to get it because the businesses are not able to function without it. So, uh, you know, if we keep the present building and uh, we have no access to East Concord, I think everything is going to be very fine. Okay. Thank you for your comments. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay. Anyone else? <clears throat> 
Thank you. My name is Colleen Curran Schulte, and I've lived in our home on East Concord for 41 years. The traffic has gotten insane on East Concord with a lot of children on the living on this, their houses on East Concord. There's hundreds of houses back there off of um, East Concord Road. And this is just totally unacceptable. I mean, they already speed and cut through because of um, Costco. They go in, it's a way to go directly into Costco from East Concord, and they make a ride into Costco. Well, they're already flooding our streets with people. It's increased the traffic hundredfold since they got in. And um, my daughter, a few years ago, a number of years ago, was knocked off her bike by um, a car. We don't have any curbs, but they go, they at least go 60 miles an hour most of the time, and it's supposed to be 30. We went to Buzz Westfall a uh, number of years ago, and we had the speed limit decrease to 30, but no one does anything like 30. They, it's two lanes. There's no suicide lane, as I called the other one. It is totally congested, and this whole development is way too big for our area. I mean, and they want to put a outdoor on East Concord there. I mean, um, and the hours are horrible, and a lot, a lot of people live on East Concord or off of East Concord. And like I said, the traffic is hilarious, horrible, horrible, horrible. I've been, I've talked to about getting police patrol. They don't, in fact, a policeman's son just was going too fast, and there's an intersection off of um, East Concord, Jamie, and um, there's a stoplight there. So I said, can you do something? Because they're speeding through the stop sign and there's been at least 20 cars since I've lived there that have been in these people's yard. They don't stop at Jamie at the stop sign and they go in too fast and they end up hitting the trees um, on Valley Crest the Hills, the house on the side faces East Concord of their house, but it has been an absolute nightmare. I would have never bought here. When I moved in, we didn't even have stoplights at Lindbergh or at, um, at 21, but they all cut through there continuously work, cut through street. And um, we got it so they're not supposed to have commercial, but they took that sign down and they just put trucks up, not allowed, but that doesn't do anything for us because they took the no commercial cut through down also. But it, this is just too huge of a development in the hours for our neighborhood. We have $400,000 homes back there. I mean, we love our homes, we love our neighborhood, but this is totally unacceptable. Okay, appreciate your comments, thank you. Anyone else? Good evening. Uh, my name is Brian Douse. Um, I'm a resident in South County, and uh, I'm here in opposition on one point. So, uh, first of all, I'd like to say good luck, right? It's a tough business that you're already in. I've been in that business for a long time. Um, sorry to hear about you guys as well. Um, money will fix all that, I'm sure. Um, but I think what everybody is looking over is the storage piece, right? So I like the drawing. I love the idea. Um, I hope it's very successful. I think it'll do good things for the community. Now, if they close off the uh, uh, East Concord, right? I think weekends only use the police officer. Maybe the, there's some middle ground there. Pickleball, I'm sure they can find some middle ground there. What I don't think there can be middle ground found on is the backstop or what I call the safety net, right? It's the storage. It's not zoned for storage today. And I'm under the impression that once you zone it for storage, it'll always be storage, right? 
It doesn't really go away. So if that is true, retail, very high risk, bar business, super high risk, okay? Any of those fail, it can all become storage. And for me, right, being in South County, plenty of storage, right? We already have plenty of storage. We already have plenty of car washes. This is the largest district, at least I think it's the largest district still in, in the county, right? So all these, you know, great idea projects come and go, and everybody's trying to stick something in our district, I feel like, all the time. So I like the project, and I hope, I hope it's successful, and I hope they figure out a way to appease the neighbors. But this very well could be, in the next three to five years, one big storage building with two outlets. And so the 250 homes that I represent that help get elected, that help elect the right, what we feel are the right officials, right? We've all been on emails. Mr. Hosinger, that's two minutes. Perfect. I, I drew the short straw of being here tonight. So I'm delivering the message of project looks fine as long as these neighbors' demands are met. Um, but we are 100% not in favor of the storage petition, uh, petition portion of it because in this high risk type of business, that is the fallback plan and eventually it will all become storage in our opinion. So thank you very much. Thank you for your comments. Appreciate it. Anyone else would like to speak? Thank you. Hi, my name is Lynn Som. I'm a resident in uh, Concord Oaks West. I, um, I'm not the board of trustees for our subdivision of 77 homes and it is um, something that we are concerned about with the access to east concord because of our neighborhood not having um, sidewalks throughout the entire east concord um, from Lindbergh all the way to tesson there are a lot of children i've lived there for about eight and a half years and since i've lived there there's been a huge changeover of households with that has came with lots of children. So we probably have over 60 children in our subdivision at this time. So we do like Halloween parades and lots of neighborhood get togethers and the increased traffic on East Concord is a huge concern. So if people come out of that um, plaza, they're gonna cut through, uh, through our neighborhood, which we already have explained with Colleen, like how, how much people speed through there. There's two stop signs. A lot of people don't stop at the stop signs. Um, we've had a number of uh, car accidents since I've lived there. Um, cars flipped over just because they're going way too fast, hit the, the hills and are out of control. Um, I don't want to beat around the bush. This establishment is going to have a lot of people drinking alcohol. Um, the late hours they are going to drink and drive and they're going to drive right through our neighborhood. That concerns me deeply. My home sits directly on East Concord. So that is a big concern of mine. Um, if there were sidewalks where people could walk safely without the increased traffic, that would be one thing. Um, another thing is, you know, their um, commercial trucks, deliveries, things like that, are they going to be coming through our neighborhood also? Um, I hope not because we already have, you know, non-truck signs up. However, we do see a lot of semi-trucks come through with full of cars for the car dealerships, which is not allowed, but they do it anyway. So we're really just concerned about keeping our neighborhood safe for all of our residents and our children that are outside um, playing with their parents and walking their pets. And um, I just hope that you take that into consideration. Also the outdoor pickleball courts, that's definitely gonna be an issue. A lot of people just built huge homes over there. Um, Colleen was saying that they're $400,000 homes. We've had homes that have been selling up to 500000 in the last couple of years. So these are really nice homes. That's a great neighborhood. It's very nice subdivisions over there. I don't think anybody is going to want to live backed up to a bunch of people yelling and hitting balls back and forth for hours all day long. Um, if it was an indoor pickleball Hilsinger, court, that's two minutes. I think that would be, that should be okay, but I don't know if the building is big enough for them to enclose that. Um, I would consider, you know, asking them to consider that. But thank you for your time. Okay, thank you for your comments. Is there anyone else who'd like to speak? Thank you. Good evening. 
Chairman Hilsinger, other members of the Commission, Director Trimble, Assistant Director Wilson, thank you all for your service and for the time to address you. <clears throat> One of the most telling slides you saw tonight was not put up by the petitioner, but by the planning department, summarizing the request. Of particular note, it listed all C3 uses, but in particular, including self-storage. That's because that's what this is all about. Make no mistake about it. When I first learned of this project, it was presented as entirely for storage and the front part along Lindbergh for car washes and additional storage. Only after concerns were expressed did we get the nice images you see on the screen now. But there are no letters presented to you of interest or letters soliciting interest for Chipotle or any other type of restaurant because they don't exist. <clears throat> this is the proverbial storage camel trying to get its nose in the tent. Once it's approved, over a relatively short period of time, I, as the other speaker has indicated, this will become completely storage. South County has more than its fair share of storage facilities already. We don't need any more. South County already has enough car washes along Lindbergh. We don't need any more. This is a classic bait and switch. Look at the pretty drawings, approve it. And then once we are there and these either don't get leased out or fail, we'll just go ahead and use the other C3 use self storage. In the words of the 44th president of the United States, you can put lipstick on a pig, but it's still a pig. At the end of the day, this is all about storage and I am expressing my concerns in opposition to any approval uh, under any iteration. Thank you for your time. Okay, thank you. Is there anyone else? Seeing none, uh, would the petitioner like to offer a rebuttal? Mr. Stock. So, Mr. Chairman, um, obviously we heard the concerns of the residents, and as I stated, you know, the pickleball, which is a very popular activity, if it's one that's not supported, I suspect we'll find an alternative for the pickleball. You know, I think I, I want to make that clear. Uh, with regards to traffic and access, we'll leave that to the professionals. You know, again, uh, gentlemen spoke to the history of it. We're not aware of the history. I wasn't involved in 91. I did go through St. Louis County's records and tried to find the history of it, and all I found is there just was no access. I didn't find where it was petitioned. We've engaged the professionals. You're talking about East Concord? Yeah, East Concord. I, I, I couldn't find any correspondence other than the governing ordinances. East Concord, back in 91, when this was zoned, was adamant about no access onto East Concord. Okay. And the Planning Commission at that time made that commitment to the neighborhood that we would not approve it. Chairman, that's wonderful. I did not know that. I think, you know, the only verbiage that is in the ordinances, the two ordinances, 15 25495 if access was permitted, would require another public hearing. That, 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 that well, just, it would. Yeah, I get it. I get it. Okay. So, so again, but, and I don't know the subject, the, the traffic's a problem. If there's something that can be done to mitigate the traffic as part of this project, that's what the traffic study is going to flush out with St. Louis County and MoDOT. We wanted to be productive. We wanted to be engaging. We don't want to be presumptuous that we can get it. That's why the professionals were engaged. Um, when Mr. Um, with regards to lighting, I, I think they understood, you know, the lighting that's there is, I don't know if it's in compliance or not, but it's, we're going to be in compliance. There's not going to be any illumination on residential properties. Um, that will, you know, be addressed. And we understand there's residential properties. If it's a six foot or an eight foot, um, typically these composite fence systems do provide attenuation of sound. We just put an eight foot in against all the residents off McKnight Road against the city of Ladue residents and for noise attenuation. So there's ways to deal with that and, and we'll do that. Um, I think the project is really good. You know, you've seen the photos, what's there. 
I, I don't think we hit anything on the title sheet of our PowerPoint presentation. It does state that our request is to include self-storage facilities. So we're not hiding it. It is certainly not a bait and switch. It's it never was 100% storage. In fact, this plan has developed. Dogwood Social has always been the component. This gentleman owns Dogwood Storage. This our Dogwood Social, he doesn't own self-storage. Um, again, we have a 91,000 square foot building. We have a very big building. Um, and that building, there's only so many uses. You know, every business is risky. Retail, restaurant, they're all risky. He's a successful businessman. He has numerous hotels. He has numerous restaurants. They're all successful. He believes in making things successful. There is a need. I, I know, I'm not going to dispute there's a lot of storage, but there's not storage within a mile of this. You have the power through a C8 ordinance to limit that storage to be exactly what we're asking for. No more than 39,300 square feet. We're not asking for storage in 91,000 square feet. So the beauty of a C8 plan commercial district is you can govern what the uses can be. That doesn't mean somebody can't knock at the door, but you could always say no again. You know, so again, we're not asking for storage so that four years we convert this building to storage. We never were 91,000 square foot storage. We were dogwood social. We had, a, we had a storage component. We had a car wash. We listened. No car washes. St. Louis County passed an ordinance that says right after we started having discussions that they can't be within a certain distance. Well, there's a car wash within that distance. So we don't, a car wash is not a part of it. Um, this is no different than any other rezoning in St. Louis County. We don't always have the restaurants lined up. The restaurants aren't interested until you have the zoning in place. You get the zoning in place, you get an approved site plan, the restaurants are there. Do this for a living, been doing it 37 years. There's nothing inconsistent with what we're doing or asking of this commission. And we are respectful of these. We will take into consideration everything we heard. We will work with staff, dialogue on a plan. We'll work with the councilman with his availability in order to dialogue and try to create the assurances that the residents of St. Louis County want that this be a high class, uh, a development they're proud of, uh, one that they'll patronize. We obviously want that and St. Louis County wants. So we'll work hard. We're good listeners. Um, I took a lot of notes. So unless you have anything for me, Mr. Uh, Chairman, Commission, we'll respond in writing. Gary, uh, so if, how big of a deal is the storage? Could you just not do the storage and put the pickleball courts inside where the storage was going to be? Well, uh, the pickleball courts, you heard Mr. Patelis three. You know, we might have been graphically showing eight, but he was going to build three. I, I, it's a big space, you know, and the market's limited. You know, you have everybody, not, not just all, there's empty space all over the place. So trying to find something that's a quiet, passive use and designing it the way we have with retail, commercial, and burying it in the middle, not being another storage place, we think is a good plan. We don't have anything else for that space. Um, asked you, could you answer my question directly? It seems like you're talking around it. Could you put the pickleball courts where the storage is planned for now? Well, the pickleball courts, would, they don't, we, we don't need 38,000 square feet for pickleball court. The answer is yes, we could put them inside the building, but a portion of it, it wouldn't take up 38,000 square feet. How, how much would it take up? I, I don't I, honestly, 400 square feet, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe 2000 square feet. I don't even know the dimension of a pickleball court, you know, being 20 by 40, that's 800, three of them, 16, 2400 square feet, less than 3000 square feet. So 10% of that storage space. And if you're sports oriented, put a batting cage in. <laughs> well, it has to, it, it, it does have to be profitable. Um, you know, so I, again, it, otherwise it ends up being closed. Okay. Anyone else? Questions, comments? Okay. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. You betcha. Thank you. At this time, we'll take a show of hands of those in favor of this petition. Those in favor. You can vote. Let the record show two. Those opposed are with concern. Keep your hands up for a minute. What do you got? Let the record show 11, and that concludes this hearing. Thank you. Appreciate it. We do, and we don't have anything for executive session. Okay, so. with that, we'll take a motion to adjourn. We have, we have a second discussion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. And 
we're out of here. Thank you. Though you were too. Hello?